All right, folks. All right, all right, all right. It's V, the Gorilla Economist, coming to you live. Actually, it's pre-recorded because Google, Scroogle, Doogle can't get their Hangouts live on air functioning properly. And uh, we're still trying to find a viable alternative to it. So it is what it is. We're just going to keep rocking and rolling. This is hump day. It's the greatest day of the week. It's the day of the week where you say to yourself, ah, the week is almost over. And what better way to spend hump day than with the one and only, the, the, the baron of Bitcoin, the sultan of silver, the Gandalf of gold, the grand viziri of all things economics and world politics and geostrategic and everything, the pathfinder of the road to Ruta himself. It is none other than Bixweir and me, the lowly simian ape extraordinaire. Flying in the background and making this whole entire broadcast happen is none other than the uncanny producer, CJ, who has once again reached into his bag of magic tricks, pulled out some flux capacitors, fired up the uh, the lithium crystals, and he's making the airwaves come out crystal clear. So that being said, Bix, what's up, buddy? How are you? I, I think we needed CJ last week when you got cut off. I think we needed CJ as well, bro. Uh, how, do you, how do you go to the bathroom without CJ is my question. I, a lot of kombucha. When I don't have CJ, I have lots of kombucha, and that makes the 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 you know the difference. It makes all the difference for me. It makes your life flow. It does. It surely does. And you know what? For folks, I've been cutting back on the dark roast as uh you know a lot of listeners were concerned for my health as well as they should be because if I were to anything were to happen to me, where would where would any sort of common sense and and uh, where would Hump Day be? You know, <laughs> where would forget everything it else? Where would Hump Day be? Just one hump in that day. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine Batman without Robin? Can you imagine Lassie or Timmy without the dog Lassie? Can you imagine <laughs> Michael Jackson without Bubbles? Because that's what we have here. It's Michael Jackson and Bubbles. You're just wrong. <laughs> it's the kombucha. Bix, we got a lot. To, we got a lot to talk about, man. Yeah, let's start rolling, dude. I mean, where do you want to begin? Do, <sighs> Do we start, is anything going on with Deutsche? Or so many things are so big right now that Deutsche is not even on the radar. <laughs> well, Deutsche is on the radar. They're on that that debacle's on hold. Everything about Deutsche is completely on hold. Um, yeah. But but let's start with you know the main topic in the news these days the the vote recount that we were all expecting. You know Trump isn't president yet, and he won't be president until January twentieth. Yeah. The, the electoral vote happens on, I think it has to be done by the 19th, and then the votes are counted in Congress on the 3rd of January. Jill Stein, in all her brilliance, has decided to challenge a few of the states. And the whole concept behind this, now Jill Stein came in, I think she came in fourth, behind Gary Johnson. <laughs> yeah, she had like 1% or something, Point yeah. 1% of 1%. It, it, this, is a, this is a bad guy ploy, and what they're trying to do is construe, mess up, throw a little wrench in the whole process and make it so that Trump does not get his required 270 electoral votes um, by voted on by the 19th of December. Right. And the way that these people <laughs> think they're going to do it is by challenging uh, the vote and and demanding a recount, which they can do, and they need money to do that. So, of course, Jill Stein uh, raised – she only raised a million dollars in her whole presidential campaign, but has raised millions and millions, enough to recount every state if she wants, You know, obviously from Soros-backed people. But the idea is to get – throw a monkey wrench in the electoral vote count um, – so that the states that she challenges won't be able to confirm the results because they're in the middle of a recount. That's right. their take. Right. And, and then they're hoping in some strange way that if they miss the January 19th date of the votes getting in, that come January 3rd, when Congress is supposed to count those votes, Mm -hmm. They are hoping that uh, Trump doesn't have a majority and Clinton has uh, the popular vote, theoretically. You know, obviously the, the vote was rigged. And they're trying to sneak her in by hook or by crook. But then after the 19th, it goes to 
Congress, if Congress doesn't have a clear majority, and they don't really even know if it's a majority of the electoral votes that are submitted or the majority of the total electoral votes that should be submitted. So, I mean, it's, it's a complete mess, but that's that's their plan. Um, and, you know, this will obviously rile up the, the, the leftist Clinton supporters and then it goes to Congress. And by January 3rd, the new Congress is sworn in. So you have Republican <laughs> uh, Senate and a Republican House. Um, it gets a little more complicated <laughs> in that process because if, if anybody from either side <laughs> wants to re count of the electoral votes, they adjourn to their prospective uh, chambers and they they vote basically yeah. on who they want to win. Theoretically, a Republican should win because the Republicans control the House and the Senate. Now, right. that's that's on the surface, that's where the world is. And that's that's what's behind this recount debacle. But what, what did the the only thing that I looked at, man, I mean Stein had everything going for the she got millions of dollars. She's got a whole bunch of people lined up, lawyers ready, uh, plans drawn up, but she forgot her calendar because she missed the the challenging date for the Pennsylvania vote vote by a week. Yeah, oh, really. Yeah, yeah. I, I so that's, you know that's, that's been shut down. The whole Wisconsin thing is- says Wisconsin says uh, we're not going to do a hand vote, and she's like, I'm going to sue. Well, there's a whole litigation process that takes a lot of time to get that set up. And then Michigan just certified for Trump. Yeah. So I think this is going to backfire on them bad, man. I, I, I think ultimately, ultimately it will unless there, there are other scenarios that can play out. And, and it, it, it is a, a, one of the worst case scenarios. If, if they really are, this really is taking out the bad guys. I have no doubt that they will try to take Trump out as in assassinate the president-elect. Well, he's not the president-elect. See, that's another thing. He's not a president-elect until after... Um, December 19th. Uh, no, I think it's after January 3rd, because theoretically, yeah. the votes haven't been counted until January 3rd. Mm-hmm. The electors cast their votes, but the votes have to be counted officially and then certified by Joe Biden, the head of the Senate. Joey Biden, Mr. Which, which is oh my God, which is a whole nother story. So he's, if you get Pizza Gate, I think Joe Biden has his own thing going on. He's got a Calzone Gate going on over there. Well, yeah, well, here's something. You, you notice how the Clinton group didn't really jump up and down and endorse Jill Stein real fast. Obama is kind of saying, "Hey, you know, we've already this is the process. Which what are you doing?" Um, I think it's all got to do with the the cover up of the the Pizza Gate stuff yeah. because. The bad guys have the dirt on on these criminals and these sycophants and these ugh, disgusting people. Um, so I think at any point, if need be, say they take out Trump, they assassinate him. You can see WikiLeaks dump all the emails, and mm-hmm. which will expose Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Chelsea Clinton, o- Obama, Joe Biden. You go down the list of the Bushes. You, you can go down the whole list of of half of Washington involved in in the. In, in anything illegal, especially the the Pizzagate stuff, which will really piss off America, then we're talking revolution, maybe, uh, maybe even you know a revote where Bernie Sanders would obviously probably win. If there was a if there was a revote, I, I would guarantee you if Bernie put his hat in the ring, then Bernie would win. Yeah, because everybody would it, it would be known to the whole world what we've known all along is that Hillary Clinton completely rigged the whole thing. She stole the election. She stole the popular vote. I mean, she stole the election from Bernie, and then she stole the popular vote from Trump. And that's okay, all. That's the amazing there. thing. The amazing thing is you've got you got George Soros who finances the making of these voting machines, right? And Hillary still can't win. That just tells you how in charge the good guys are now and and the bad guys are are literally hanging on to scrap so right now i, I think the, the trouble spots lie in uh them trying to take trump out with an assassination attempt and and i'm sure he's aware of it i'm sure mm-hmm. the secret service is aware that there will be attempts on his life between now and the january 20th so hopefully they're taking steps to prevent that um 
so yeah, that's where we are as far as I can tell on the uh, on the the last ditch effort of the snowflakes to get Hillary into office. Uh, the last ditch effort of the snowflakes, which brings us to a heated topic that is in the minds of many Americans everywhere and many people throughout the world are the Trump appointments. What is going on with that? What is your take, sir? <laughs> it's pissing off all the Trump guys and. You know, it's, it's kind of like half an hour. It's really, I, I think I know exactly why he's, what he's doing and why he's doing it. Because sure. he's, he's, uh, he's nominating, half of them are people you would expect him to nominate. More, right. uh, you know, people, you know, looking out for the freedom of America. Sure. Um, Ron Paul-ish types. And then half of them are neocons, knee deep in the, the bad guys, blah, blah, blah. The latest uh, is Steve Mnuchin. Mm-hmm. Mnuchin or Mnuchin? I like to call him Minutia. That's all I keep thinking is Minutia. <laughs> everybody's calling him Munchin. <laughs> Munchin. Munchkin. Which, which right, Steve another, Munchkin. Yeah. <laughs> but Munchkin. I mean, this guy. This guy. If you're gonna, if you're gonna appoint someone who is number one knee deep in the bad guys, the conspiracy, the Goldman Sachs crowd. His bosses were Hank Paulson and Robert Rubin. Right. Uh, he's buddy, buddy with uh, blank fine. He is. And the, I mean, I think the key is he is the, the King computer market rigger. That's what he yeah. did at Goldman Sachs. He was in charge of computer market rigging, which is the, I mean, if you're going to keep the system going, that's the guy you hire. If you're right. going to keep rigging the markets, that's the guy you hire. Now, and and there's a couple other nominations like uh, Rice Previous, the the uh, what is it, what is he chief of staff now of of Trump? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, that guy's ridiculous. That oh, guy, he's, he, he's a joke. And and that that that's the first appointment that really got me thinking. Okay, what is Trump doing here? Trump right. always has a plan in the background. He well, he's he, got bad he with the election. Bad. He's got Bannon that's in charge of Priebus. Well, we got, we got, we, we see, we saw with the election, he was always something else going on behind the scenes and it worked. Right now, I think he is appointing, first of all, he's appointing people so he can actually become president. Right. Because if he did appoint all libertarian types, he would be he taken out in an instant. Easily, easily, right. So, and Treasury Secretary is the most important thing for the bad guys because that's where they they get funded is is rigging of the markets and the president is in charge of the exchange stabilization fund so this appointment is is the clear you know sign to the bad guys that trump's gonna play ball now here's here's my theory trump is gonna bust the system wide open and yeah. one of the first and he said it already that that the fed's gonna go and or at least Janet Yellen, which I think it will be the whole Fed. But he also said we're in a bubble, and which is obvious to everyone now. But that mm -hmm. bubble was caused by the Exchange Stabilization Fund, which is controlled by the president, and the, the Treasury Secretary takes orders from the president. Here's what I think is going to happen. when If Trump gets in on the 20th, and if he's signed in, uh, sworn in to be our president, he will give – Mnuchin the the reigns for a couple weeks, and of course Mnuchin will rig and and cheat and steal and everything, and then they're going to pull the plug very quickly. I would say no more than you know, not before the end of the first quarter. And pulling the plug means stopping the exchange stabilization fund and crashing the system and getting rid of that bubble because Trump doesn't want to carry this bubble forward. You know that's he's been very clear about that. He wanted it to pop before. He got into office. Um, if I think there's if there's a, attempts on his life, I think you will see it pop before he gets into office. But remember how Trump became famous on The Apprentice. It's all about you're fired. He has no problem firing people, and he's good at it with the blink of an eye. So I think, uh, and you need someone to blame when the the system collapses. So the people will be de demanding getting rid of this guy Mnuchin, which I think. I think is is Trump's plan is to put him where he is, along with Rice Priebus, along with uh, that uh, the woman he put in front of, in charge of uh, what was it, uh, Department of Transportation, uh, the Chu, what's her name, Elaine Chu, mm -hmm. which I've seen her. I mean, she was in charge of lying about the labor secret, the labor statistics at, when she was labor secretary. Isn't she the one from California? 
No, nah, she's Mitch McConnell's wife. Oh. Yeah, she's she's knee deep in the criminality. And I, I think Treasury Secretary, once uh, Mnuchin is fired because he, he'll be the guy in the hot seat when the collapse happens, I think uh, Trump will hire that guy, John Allison, uh, who is a, right. a libertarian guy who, who most people thought he would nominate anyway. Right. I agree with that sentiment, man, because I think Trump is uh, – people don't understand the, the way Trump is. He'll get these guys in, get what he wants, and he's going to fire them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, what, what he wants is, is someone in the seat to, to you know, replace. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he's going to pop the bubble. If it doesn't happen before he gets in, it's going to happen soon after. And this guy, Mnuchin, he was the head of freaking IT computer market rigging for Goldman Sachs. Mm-hmm. While uh, Hank Paulson and and Robert Rubin were at Treasury rigging all the markets, I mean they worked in cohoots. They were all working together in this. Uh, so now, it's now, all maybe. about computer, all about computer rigging. So if if we do have a crash in the system, a monetary crash, monetary collapse, which I think is going to happen next week anyway, for for other reasons we'll talk about soon. But I, I think uh, Mnuchin will be out, and uh, Trump will put in John Allison to go forward. Yeah. yeah so that's I, that's my take on on why these people who like Mitt Romney, are you freaking kidding me? You know, that, that's, what's, the, what's the angle with Mister Hominy Grits over there? Mister Hominy Grits. Yeah, that's what I call him, Mitt Hominy. Oh. Mitt, Mitt Hominy. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you have your own language, <laughs> don't you? Sorry, man. It's you know, you never had hominy grits. You ever been to the south? I I have, I have, All but right. I, I I hadn't associated Mitt Romney with that. But I think uh, I think it's it's some of the same. He's Trump has to appease this the bad guys, the far right bad guys who are saying, you know, if we can get our treasury secretary and we can get blah 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 in there, you know, we can we can have continue the show and let Trump, you know flail in the wind um whether or not they uh put romney as secretary of state i think it's very, very important so that uh trump doesn't, doesn't get uh, assassinated before the 20th to do something yeah. like that um and then he could fire him on the 21st if he wants so <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, give, maybe give him a week's worth of severance That's but it. uh yeah there, there's no love there and and it's all a show it's a game it is being uh, orchestrated at the highest levels, and and Trump's still winning the game, but it's far from over. We need he needs to get into office, and then he could staff his you know his his closest advisors with whoever he wants. And he's the best fire in the in the United States, probably in the world. And yeah. you know, how many how many uh, uh, campaign managers did he fire uh, right. over the course of his campaign? So I mean, it's right. all part of an overall plan to uh, take the system down, put people in who have an ability to restart for America. Trump will be very good at that because it's all going to be about, you know, building new jobs, you know, all that stuff about building infrastructure and all that, that uh, Trump talks about. Yeah. There's two things it can do. One, it could explode the debt even higher to ensure the system crashes. Or two, it might be an after the crash type of thing that we yeah. reallocate money to everybody. And one way to do that is to rebuild, you know, put jobs out there, not just give everybody money. We'll obviously give everybody a new kind of money to start with, but to give them jobs and, and jobs that they like and they want to work at. And I think uh, that's all part of it. And I think Trump's a good guy to have in that position. Um, I, I still think. Uh, that uh, Bernie Sanders will have some role or should have some role in that um, just to calm the masses. <laughs> and, but, but who knows? I mean, I think all the insanity is going to happen in the next three or four months. Um, yeah. And then, and the system's got to be taken down. That bubble has to pop um, because we're the largest debtor nation in the world by far. We can't afford our debts anymore. And, and even printing money is, 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 turning out to be a problem. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my 50 cents. Yeah. You know, I, I agree with uh, so much of what you said, man. I, you know, I, I believe that's the angle that Trump's doing. That's why, you know, people are like panicking. Ah, he sold out. He's a shell. Calm down, calm down. The reason why this is different this time is number one, the guy's a multi-billionaire. 
number one. Number two, actually, number one, he's an alpha dog. This guy is an absolute alpha male, and he has a huge ego. Nobody's going to boss this guy around. He's always – he's so hyper-competitive. He's always looking to one-up you and, 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 and literally rake you over the coals. The second thing is he's a multi-multi-billionaire. The third thing is these guys that he's hired, like like Minutia. Let's just call him Minutia or Munchkin. Steve Munchkin. Minutian. Minu- Minutian. So when he hired uh, uh, Minutian the Munchkin, he knows – look, Minutian the Munchkin is, is somebody who's, you know, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's an insider. He's all those things. But he's somebody that can be coerced, that can be bullied. And there's going to be a lot of bullying, I believe, that Donald Trump is going to be doing. I, I just, I think he's just going to fire him. I, of course, I, 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 I agree with you. He's going to be blamed. Yeah, he's, he's going to set these guys up for something. This guy is a, he's a master chess player. He's setting them up for something. He is not going to keep these guys. I agree with you wholeheartedly, bro. And you you want to, I don't know if I told you this. Did I tell you that I, I, I figured out why Trump kept saying that Mexico is going to build the wall? Why? Did we talk about that yet? No. Because if you look at Mexico, Mexico is the the most insanely stupid country in the world because they export they're the largest exporter of silver. They have so much silver in the ground. They they should be the richest country in the world. Right. And I think when the market rigging stops, I think that's why Trump went down to Mexico to talk to the president and they came back kind of buddy buddy. Was he went down there and said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna stop the market rigging. Silver's gonna go to two, three, four thousand dollars an ounce, and you're gonna be one of the richest countries in the world. You're gonna want to build that wall so that people from the U.S. don't go down into into Mexico for all the your your you know gigantic amount of jobs that will be available in the mining industry and in the in the commodity industry once this market rigging stops. You're gonna be the richest country in the world, really, because you have the largest reserves." Yeah. Of silver, and I I believe that's how Trump will get Mexico to build the wall. Is they're going to want to build the wall, right? Absolutely, and that's, then plus all, that's plus, my that's my theory on and because all the stuff Trump knows what we know. He knows the markets are rigged. One thousand knows the bad guys. He knows George Soros and the Rothschilds. He knows this whole game, right? And. He can't like come out and say, "I'm going to change everything." Here's what I'm going to do because they'll just take him out. They'll shoot right. him. They'll, they'll JFK him. Yeah, and right. I mean, and JFK didn't even come out and say it. He he tried to you know get silver certificates back in the back into the hands of the people and all that, and mm. that's part of why he was taken out. But this is dangerous business, and that's why I think between now and the twentieth, Trump has to be on guard for that assassination attempt um, because it might be. Or a, a gigantic false flag that kind of stops the the election, the the um, you know, swearing in process, or or something, something between now and uh, January twentieth. I, I I think also as far as assassination, they got to do it between now and December nineteenth because on the nineteenth the votes are in, and then theoretically, I think that's it, I think that's when he. You can't stop him becoming the uh, uh, president-elect. And the rules state that if you're the president-elect and you die, get assassinated or die of you know whatever you're dying from, then the vice president takes over. Right. But before the 19th, it is kind of unclear as to who would be become the president. And, and I think the rules state that Congress can vote for anybody. So I would say be on the lookout. If you're Donald Trump, Donald, listen to me. Be very careful between now and December 19th mm-hmm. because after that, Pence will be the president if Donald Trump is knocked off. And I, you know, the, the crazy thing is I think he, he, I, I think he knows that you know, at, 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 at a level. I think he's very well of, aware of it. I mean, this is the first president who's, uh, who's a big fan of the alt media who – Ran to the top, the, to the biggest office on on the planet, uh, because of support from the old media and from the grassroots. Now, what I was saying is that he knows what we know, uh, plus a lot more, uh, especially now that he's getting all the daily briefings as president elect. You know, I but so, I, think, which is, I, think, uh, I think the good guys behind the scenes who are who are making all this happen have have clued him in long ago. 
So, yeah, it's good stuff. Absolutely. Which brings us to the next topic of the day, since uh, Deutsche Bank is still on the radar. Deutsche Bank's ugly, twisted cousin, the Italian bank, Monta de Pesci. It is here. It, 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 is, it, it is, is here ominous. Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, it's Sunday. It's here Sunday. Sunday is Sunday, the, Sunday, ta- Sunday. <laughs> I know. Sunday is the Italian referendum. So, uh, there we and, go. and the referendum is about, you know, changing the government so that, you know, the, the, uh, those in power have more power to screw with the lives of the people. So they're not going to, they're not going to vote for it. Um, right. and that's pretty much a given right now. Who knows if George Soros got the voting machines, you know, under his control? But I think the good guys are in charge of this one too. I think Italy will reject the referendum and say no on Sunday, which will throw any now Renzi, the, the was he the president or premier? What do they call it? Now? Yeah, well, president of Italia. Of Italia. Yeah. Anyway, he he said he's going to resign if uh, it doesn't if it doesn't pass, and it looks like it's not going to pass, so he's going to resign. And the uh, Italian banks have dropped like 20% in the last few months. And they're saying that Monte de Pesci is saying, well, if it doesn't pass, it's not very likely that their, uh, their rescue plans of, of how to save their soul will, will actually happen. No surprise there. We've been talking about that for a while. And not only that, all the, all the, all kinds of, uh, referendums and votes are coming up in Europe over the next two weeks. Um, and all of them are looking like big losses for the powers that be. Uh-huh. Um, just in Italy, it will probably trigger the need for a bailout. Now, what the, you know, what the news, uh, financial news people are saying is, oh, well, it would, they need a bailout from the government. Well, the government has to go back to the EU, and the EU would have to, you know, there's talk of using the the QE money to bail out parts of the Italian banks. And it's not just Monte de Pesci. It's it's like four or five of the Italian banks are trying to do the exact same thing: raise money and offload bad debts. Everybody's trying to do that in Europe: raise money yeah. and offload bad debts. And what happens when you everybody tries to raise money at the same time? You can't. There's not enough money to go around. What happens when everybody tries to offload bad debts at the same time? You can't because everybody's dumping them and there's no one to buy them. So it's you know it's it's running into this vicious circle. And if you throw into the mix a government that is non-functional after Sunday, because the president has stepped down, none of the reforms are going to get uh, pushed through. Um, the, you're looking at the collapse of Monte Pesci. And the question is, how many derivatives do they have? Um, I my guess is it's up there. It's up there in the big numbers, and the definitely in the trillions. Um, so, and and the counterparty to a lot of those is da, 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 Deutsche Bank. So yeah, it's all happening, and uh, it it should get kind of crazy next week in Europe. Um, I think I think in in the U.S. the rigging market rigging will continue until obama leaves office yeah uh unless something like a false flag happens you know before the end of the year or before trump gets in which is i would say better than 50 50 chance there's either an attempt on trump's life or (laughs) some false flag um could be around you know trump tower type of thing uh symbolic type of false flag attacking trump tower i don't know uh, if you listen to some of the Farsight guys who who do this amazing stuff with uh, it's kind of like uh, remote viewing. Uh, it is remote viewing, I think. Uh, they're expecting some kind of a, an event to take place in December, a little, pretty large event within a city. Um, false flag is explosion. Chicago, San Francisco. I, I would, my guess would be either Washington or, or New York. Nah, um, nah, nah. It's not I would, I would mainly guess New York. Yeah. No, well, the, the descriptions there's enough, of it. There's it, enough dis- destruction that has occurred to New York from all the Hollywood movies, all the monster movies, alien invade. <laughs> I mean, we got invaded by aliens. We got attacked by multiple different types of monsters, uh, and we even had real life terrorist attacks. Uh, uh, we're done. I, I, I think tag <laughs> sure. Chicago. You're it. I, and plus, you know, I, 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 let's I, be honest. I, 
It, it, it's Chicago listen. deep dish pizza is not pizza. It's not Whoa, pizza. Wow. Don't go there. You know, we got a lot of I'm listeners. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I kid. I love Chicago. It's the best. Chicago is the it's best. Delicious. I and I love their hot dogs. The their hot dogs are incredible. Yeah, you can backpedal now. You already said it. You're out in Chicago. They're not letting you back in. Damn it. <laughs> but no, I, I think if, if you're the bad guys, you got to make a big statement. You got. You got to. It's got to be something big enough to disrupt their being. You know, taken out. Right. Um. So yeah, Chicago wouldn't be big enough. I don't think. I think uh, New York City would be the symbolic. Uh, you know, blame it on ISIS. Blame it on disenfranchised. How about, how about Los Angeles? Well, let's go to the West Coast. No, you take out Los Angeles, and you know that's their their little you know Vegas playtown type of place that you know the bad guys like to go. They like to keep that thing nice and corrupt. Well, it, uh, you know, why don't it's just gotta tell be financial? It's it's got to be financial because they need to disrupt the system. They need it's Chicago, man. It's Chicago. That's well, where the CME is. Well, it's true. Comex, but, everything, bang. But they need they need something to blame for the the system crashing. They, Kansas they, City. They don't want to blame themselves. They want the president to come out and say, "Oh my God." This is a terrorist attack, kind of like 9-11. Everybody buy stocks and we're gonna we're gonna tell the Fed to print as much money as possible after this horrific attack. It's not the banker's fault. It's this it's this uh, terrorism, the terrorism that we're we being subjected to, it's their fault. So that's kind of where we are. Speaking of terrorism, Ohio State, man, your thoughts. It was a knife. <laughs> They're running around saying, Oh my god, there's a shooter and blah 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 and multiple deaths. I yeah. heard it was a knife. He had, yeah. he had a knife, and it's yep, he did. And Tim Kaine, Tim Kaine, uh, uh, Hillary's vice presidential candidate, he's like, this gun violence has to stop. And then somebody had to tell him, it, Tim, it was a knife attack. Oh, I, I don't know much <laughs> about it. Um, I don't know if it's a false flag or not. I don't think it it matters. I think there will be false flags continuing until Trump gets in office. Once right. Trump is in office, he can kiss the false flags goodbye. Because if anybody tries to do it, Trump will take out the people who planned it. They'll yep. go right to the source. They'll go to George Soros or Hillary Clinton yep. or, or the yep. Rothschild family. That, that's another thing that's coming, man. I mean, he has not backed off one iota from this Hillary thing at all. Well, it's it's time. You know, I, I got all riled up about this Pizzagate thing, and then yeah, come on, come on. Look into what's it. What's your take it, on the on the Pizzagate thing, man? I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I I stopped talking about it because once you look into it, it, it it's been exposed for decades. Right. I mean, the reality of of our the way our system works is it doesn't matter how many facts you have. The rule of law is not being upheld. You just go to 9-11 and there's so much truth that has been exposed and it's so obvious. And yet the rule of law is not being upheld. That's right. the same thing going on with the Pizzagate stuff. You got Google and Twitter and, and all and Reddit, all these people banning even the discussion of it. Yeah. And you can't even and, hashtag it. Oh my God. What about the children? <laughs> I mean, anybody who says to me that's a conspiracy theory needs to look deep in their soul because they're basically saying, I don't care if these children are molested, raped and murdered because it would mess with my sense of what my government is like. That's what right. they're saying. So anybody who tells me that, uh, that the Pizzagate thing is fake news, that's, that's the, the thing they're that's using. That's the new now. thing. Fake right. news. Fake news. Anybody who tells me that without looking at the facts is basically saying, I don't care if, if children are brutalized, raped and murdered. I don't. I it, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me in the in the least. That's exactly what they're saying when they tell you you're a conspiracy theorist. And I want I want them to answer that question when you turn it right back on them and say, "What about the kids? How could you not look at the facts? How could you not look at all the things that are happening right across the street from the uh, the Clinton Foundation's you know Save the World the uh, headquarters? Why not go there?" Because there are children getting abused and murdered because you're not opening your eyes. You're not willing to see the truth. So right. see, exactly. I, that's why I don't like to talk about it. I just start going off. And and then you look at everything else and it's, and it's like, oh, my God, this has been going on for so long and is completely known about and, and given the nod. Right. And because of these, you know, 
you can look at the ritual sacrifice stuff. Uh, I did some research into that, uh, you know, back to the Egyptian uh, sacrifice, Osiris and, and the, the 14 parts of his body that were chopped up and sure. And the fish that ate his private part and, and all that stuff. I mean, if you get, see, I, when I get on these subjects, I just research them as much as I can figure out if it's fact and what it's based on. And then, and I try to move on. This is a hard one to move on from, but so many people have, have been screaming about this for so long and people aren't allowed to talk about it. You're not, I think hey, he's back. Are you uh, back. I'm back. I'm back. I, I don't know what happened. See, oh, I know what happened. It's it's every time I start talking about this, they they cut us off. Yeah, this is almost as bad as when you went after Hillary. <laughs> almost as bad. Almost. Well, I was as going bad. after the the British royal family who was needing. Yeah. Anyway, let's we're going up. Uh, we're going up on the target list, buddy. <laughs> let's just. I mean, it's nothing new. I mean, no, there, no. there's been documentaries on mainstream media about this stuff. Absolutely, with, Joe, with Jimmy Savile. Yeah. Well, no, it goes so much higher than that. And, and, you know, right up to the Royal family and, and all their occult stuff that they do. It's crazy. Right. 1000% man. You know, I find it incredible that the owners of the ping pong place and the pizzeria have all these connections with individuals that are in the justice department, uh, that are in charge of the pedophile, um, prosecution of pedophiles. Exactly, man. Yeah. And, 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 and child network trafficking and all that other stuff. It is incredible to me to see the to see the correlation. There's there's so much evidence staring us in the face. I mean, well, it's I, like nine eleven. It's like it's like nine oh. eleven when people started questioning nine eleven. Yeah, everybody got angry. Oh my god, how how dare you talk about you know, this this tragedy in in that way? It's like give me a break. If we yeah. if we're not smart enough to deal with reality, let's live in this fantasy world and and let's keep the stock market going the way it is and. And let's give everybody a safe space to live in and breathe in, and uh, and let, let's let the government take over our lives and then chop us up and use us for bait. Right. Exactly. You know, if, if that's if you're too chicken to stand up and and look at evidence and say what you believe, then you know, good luck to you. Go go live somewhere where you know your life is in a in a little bubble and you you have no re idea of what reality is. Because I am so sick of it. I'm so sick of safe spaces and political correctness. I'm, I want to get back to nationalism, get back to the love of my country, uh, get back to the things that made America great. We didn't become great because you know we offended everybody within our, our borders. And so we had to modify our behavior every time we walk out the door. No, America is about expressing your freedom and your liberty and in and, and justice right. and living your life according to your rules, not the government's rules and not, not a politically correct uh, Bible or Quran or anything. You know, it's up to the individual. That's what uh, the Republic was all about. I, I think we're about to return to that, but when we do return to it, it's going to be difficult. We're not used to it. We're used to having the government there to catch us when we fall, mm -hmm. you know, what if there's no government? What what if the government gets cut from thirty million employees to say thirty thousand employees? Right. Uh, what are we gonna do? And that's the kind of thing that has to happen. Is the federal government has to be shrunk so much that it doesn't have control of our lives at all? All it has control of is protecting our our rights, as you know, in in the Bill of Rights and uh, protecting the Constitution. Everything else is left up to the states, and yeah. that's that's where we're headed back to after the system crashes. Because when the system crashes, there's going to be no money to fund these 300 or 30 million people that currently work for our government. Well, exactly, man. Exactly. Which brings us to the other thing, the 2017 Economist magazine cover. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, talk about cryptic. We have <laughs> eight tarot cards up there. Is it eight or 16? That is eight. That's eight, right. Eight tarot cards up there. Your breakdown, sir. Well, it, it would take more than just a, a slight <laughs> conversation about it. Um, I'm writing a report on it. Um, it's it's pretty in-depth. I've, I've done this in two – I first one was an article in 2005, and then a large two large reports in 2000 uh, – or large articles in 2006. And this is The World in 2017. 
Is like, that magazine 2015, on the 2016, and 2017? It just hit the shelves. Yeah. I oh, just, good. I gotta go pick it up. Yeah, and it's you know I was. I'm not saying I'm disappointed. I, I the <laughs> 2015 was was kind of cryptic, but you know there was all these evil things in there that that a lot of it happened. The the, the false flag in Paris and at the soccer stadium and all that stuff right in November around when the, the arrows in the ground. So right. in 2016, it was insane how much they put on there. And you can tell the good guys thought they were in complete control because there was false flag stuff all over that. And inside on the calendar, I wrote a big article about it. 2017 is completely different, yeah. but completely different, not in a let you down way, completely different as in, I think the people at the economist magazine, know that the control of the bad guys is is going away and they are in denial to save their own ass mm. so so and there's a lot here on the cover there's definitely a lot that but it's it's ultimately it's it's a good reading and analysis which i end up at it'll be hard to get there you know we'll go we're going to go through a lot of death and destruction over 2017 but it is required to remove the bad guys from our lives and get from here to there that's kind of what the cover shows. And I, I go into in depth in this report, which should come out in a week or so, but also in the, in the calendar on the inside, if you compare the calendars for 2016 and 2017, it is just night and day. 2016 was full of death and destruction arrows everywhere. Arrows in the London flag Brexit mm -hmm. vote. And you remember mm -hmm. that, uh, the, uh, I think it was the, one of the government officials who was murdered like a week before the Brexit. Yep. Mary Jo something or Joe something. Yeah. Mary Jo Brown or something like that. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you look at the way the economist dealt with arrows in the first, um, in the 2015 magazine, and then you look at all the arrows in the calendar. And I, and I said this beforehand, I, I said this just when it was released, I go, there's only, there was like 25 arrows strewn all over the calendar. Only one had hit anything. It was right in the, the, uh, london flag on this on the voting podium and i said expect some false flag stuff around the brexit vote and expect the a brexit surprise and blah 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 it happened um but it's interesting because mid-year through 2016 as all this stuff was happening the economist came out with a mid-year uh special publication called the world if Mm -hmm. And it was all about if Trump won the presidency, how bad the world would be. And it went and it had another one of these covers with all these symbols on it. And it it was just just railing on how horrible Trump would be. And now we now that Trump's the president and, and the economist comes out with this magazine and you compare the calendars, the new calendar is just, you know, happy go lucky fluff. Everybody's giving everybody else a hug, pretty much. And there's even an article within the inside of the 2017 magazine talking about how people unjustly or, or wrongly were reading conspiracies into the 2015 and 2016 uh, magazines, which is complete bullcrap because they did the same thing on both the, <laughs> both the covers. And it, it, it's a long analysis, but ultimately it's about, the transition we're going through right now about the destroying of the old system. The my, one of my favorite cards is the judgment card with Trump sitting on top of the world and, you know, laying out some of the, the judgment that's needed upon these criminals that are being taken out, which I have always said, you know, these people need to be for us to move forward in an honest way with the rule yeah. of law. You're going to have to have to prosecute these people. You can't sweep it under the rug anymore. You can't, you know, say, oh, you know, Hillary Clinton did all these bad things, but since she was so important to our country and to people in our country, we're not going to prosecute her. No, you can't do that. If we're going to move forward in truth and honesty, let she the people help. decide. Let the people decide. Let the people know the truth about what happens, all these bad things that the Bushes did and the Clintons did, and the truth about everything. I mean, everything from – from our politicians to our the food we eat to the air we breathe to the the history of you know I don't know ET on on planet Earth extraterrestrial life you know who built the pyramids the pyramids down in the Antarctic which is really interesting and John Kerry flew down to the Antarctic right when the election was going on to have some gigantic meetings with the 
with this civilization literally that lives down there. And it's really bizarre and we don't know about it. And and that's the kind of stuff that it's the Nazis, you know. man. It's the Nazis. Well, pro well, I, I think they went there. <laughs> there are pyramids down there, and they're they're huge. They dwarf anything in in the Giza plateau. Um, so yeah, I I don't know, but that's the kind of stuff. Stuff like that, the truth needs to come out. You know, if we can't yeah, but, build those pyramids today in right. Egypt, how did they build them before there was any mechanical, you know, equipment? And and don't tell me they you know they built rocks with mud and, and stuck them there because those rocks weren't built with mud. So yeah, it's 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 time. It's time if we're gonna shed these people that control us, we're gonna lift the veil. And when we lift the veil, there'll be free energy because we we've been able to make uh, free energy for a long long time. There's massively better ways to make energy than digging uh, oil out of the ground or and and burning it yeah. and causing all the pollution. All these things need to change. One thousand percent, man. I agree. And, but I think I think a lot of that is shown in these tarot cards. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the progression, the way tarot works is you stop on start on the top left and go from left to right, and then so it it would starts with the tower and the explosion and all that. Mm -hmm. That's the ripping apart of the fabric of of what we thought was true and what we are moving to that's different, but even more true. We're yeah. going to rip apart that. Then you got Trump with the judgment. The world card is is truthfully that's my favorite card because that's all about money and right. gold. And if you look at every card, it has gold on it. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh no, it, dude, I didn't even notice that. Oh wow. uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah. Every card has gold on it. And then and then the hermit card next next to that, the people walking through the gold, people walking through the canyon. I still think that the mother of all gold uh, finds was in the in Grand Canyon. It was the reason for creating the Federal Reserve back in. the in 1913 was that they found all this gold it would have destroyed the monetary system so they hid it for you know that rainy day when we need it and that's where we are ever since then we've been printing money like it's going out of style um and then you got death and in the death card is is exactly that there's going to be a lot of people dying because of the transition and because of some of the things we've we've built like our nuclear power plants that are completely dependent on cooling water yeah, yeah i see it I mean, yeah. and then we're fracking. So, you know, the, the ground is, and the earth is expanding. If you believe in this expando planet model, which I do completely because I see that all the planet, all the land masses fit together in one little ball. Right. Um, but, it, and then, and then you got new technologies coming, the magician card, and then the wheel of fortune is kind of happening now with all these uh, EU uh, countries basically kicking out the old establishment people and, and hiring uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I electing see nationalists. It looks like Merkel is on that little tilt wheel. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It, that thing's I, I great. See, I see Mary, the, Mary Le Pen. Uh, and, yeah. uh, but I think that card is out of place. That, that, that's something that's confusing me because it, in tarot, it kind of goes in sequence. Yeah. If, if, if you look at the tower at the top, that's kind of where we start and we go to the right and kind of these things are happening. But th that that wheel of fortune thing is kind of near the end, and the end, the star card is all about the future, and and the people in those stars, those little faces, they're like missing kids, aren't they? No, 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 they're not. There, there's art. There's an article inside the magazine about them. These are all the millennial stars, the young kids who are actually not sitting in their parents' basement, actually going out there and doing something. So no. it's actually a real they good exist? sign. Yeah. It's a good sign for the future, and they talk about it in the magazine. The magazine is not at all doom and gloom, no, other than helpful. everybody dying on the front. But but the reason it's not doom and gloom, I believe, well, is, is they know that the bad guys are going away, and yeah. and the econ and that judgment card tells you right there, if the economist was involved, the people within the economist were involved, the cartoonist was involved in at least knowing about all these bad things that were done to us. The, you know, we'll be going after him too. We need we need a complete uh, reconciliation of of what was done to us in the past, and and they need to be adjudicated and and found guilty if they're guilty, or let off if if they didn't. You know, if they were unwitting and, and unwilling person to to do that, but it, it needs to be exposed. And I think the economist, the people at the Economist, are extremely nervous about that, and that's why they changed this edition versus the 2016 and 2017.
2016 and 2015 editions. Anyway, uh, I, it looks really good, man. I'm, I mean, just reviewing the Tower, the Judgment, the World, the Hermit. <laughs> but uh, there's bad things in there, and, and death. Death looks pretty ominous. <laughs> but the, yeah, but look at, I mean, look at the the little river with the fish dying in it. What and, little river with the fish dying? And in the it? death card. You see the. Oh uh, yes, yes. The, the, the river drained river. river with the. Hey man, could that be the? Uh, and the, the nuclear thing behind it. Yeah, could that be that that fault that 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 runs in the mid Midwest? The Madryn fault. Yeah, it, it could be, or or from all the fracking. I mean, the Earth has to expand. That's what all the chemtrails are for—is to reflect the neutrinos so they don't get into the Earth and cause new matter to make the Earth expand. It, this is not a secret anymore. People need to open their mind to understand that the science they were taught in in high school probably the last time most people took science class is not real science. That's not, you know, the plate tectonic theory w works to a point, but it's not a bunch of plates that are all the same size at all times floating around on, on molten lava. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's that's bigger not than that. There's matter being created inside the earth and it's pushing the planet out. And unless the planet is allowed to expand because our sun is expanding right now. As it goes through the denser matter of the Milky Way, it is it is burning more stuff as it goes, you know, flies through it, whatever, you know, how you know, hundred thousand miles an hour. I, I don't remember how fast the sun actually goes, moves around the Milky Way, but we're behind the the sun spiraling behind it. It's dragging us along, and unless we expand, we're not going to move farther back. So the sun will get hotter, and we'll stay in the same space, and we'll just get hotter and hotter. And that's kind of, you know, the whole global warming thing. That's that's what's causing it is because we're spraying and all the chemtrails and all that, we're trying to stop this expansion process. The Earth's not going to expand to the point it needs to expand and get heavier and bigger so it can fall farther behind the sun so we don't burn up. And I think it will take a big jolt, which if you look in card number four, the hermit on the mm -hmm. bottom right there. Right. Do you see the Earth with North America with a split through it? With a split through it, right. And then I see a whole bunch of crowds of people walking through what seems to be a a, a valley. A, a valley, like the Grand Canyon to me. And it says, Stop and they're people. gold, and they're gold, <laughs> and they're so, golden yeah. people. Yeah, and I mean, my 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 report has the full analysis on everything and how how it relates to Road to Ruta theory. Because in the road to river theory, also with the crash of the system, we're going to bring all our troops home, and people won't trade with us, which is fine because we need the manufacturing. And so all those, if you look at all the uh, the flags, the people yeah. are holding, they're all like you know no PP, no TTP, TTP no stop, no uh, NAFTA. Yeah. Basically, we'll stop trading because who would trade with us after we destroyed the currencies? And, and we've been in charge of fiat money for a long, long, long time. So we just bring everybody home, throw all the, all the, uh, all the troops on the borders. Not that people will want to stay in the United States, I mean, especially in Mexico. I think, I think there's going to be a mass flood out of the United States in the Mexico to a point where the Mexican government is going to say, we need a wall. We're going to put up the wall because we got to control this. <laughs> and they're going to pay for it. Well, I'm going to go to Chihuahua. That's where I'm going to go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, of, that's the overall plan. It's crazy, yeah. Dude, I love it, man. I'm going to go pick that issue up today. So, folks, if you haven't gotten a chance to, head over to your local Barnes & Noble's booksellers and pick yourself up a copy of The Economist Magazine 2017, the year ahead. And uh, I did not get paid to put that plug in. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and, by, and by my, uh, my analysis, my report on it, uh, yes, yes. Get big, even better. Get Bix's report. It's better than the magazine. Fifteen bucks. What a bargain! Fifteen bucks. There you go. That's a steal and a half that's, for that that's, info. Brother. That's two, uh, three of your uh, Brazilian rose copies or whatever you drink. It's it, it, it's exactly five bottles of kombucha. Oh, I, yeah. I don't. Now drink you're on kombucha. That's right. No more kombucha. I'm, I'm into kombucha now. <laughs> Speaking of expansion. Venezuela and its inflation. What is going on with Nicholas the Sweetness Maduro? It's happening so fast, bro. It's I mean, vicious. It, it well, you got to remember the U.S. is has control of every currency with their computer programs. So it is it is the U.S. that is causing this. Although, yeah, granted, they're 
they're printing as much as they can, as fast as they can. And, and it really has gone into that uh, Weimar Republic hyperinflation yeah. mode where... Are they at Zimbabwe levels yet? I know they're about 750%. Uh, they're close. They're, they're, I think they're estimated for 750% at the end of the year is what the IMF is saying. Mm-hmm. Other people are saying that, no, it's going to be more like uh, 1,200%, um, yeah. which is the hyperinflation number. Because basically the people have stopped accepting the, it it just got too hard to carry all those bills to buy a loaf of bread. Um, And there's a black market in using the U S dollar. There's a lot of barter going on. um, And there's a lot of people, a lot of theft, obviously, and a lot of people dying and suffering. All the animals are dying because no one can afford to feed an animal down there. Right. Right. I mean, people are eating their pets, man. Yeah, this is what kills me. But they have no meat on them anymore because they couldn't feed them for the last month. This is what kills me about these idiots. It's if you've ever been to Venezuela, it is a resource-rich country. Oh yeah, it's but, but, so mismanaged. It's not mismanaged. It, it is. It is being destroyed by the by us by the U.S. Oh, it's being and wrecked, man. It, it, is, it is brought into the machine, and they don't know it. They don't understand it. They don't know how currencies trade on the. Open market floating current. That's such bullshit. It was uh, Art, not Arthur Burns. It was uh, who was the Fed Treasury Secretary after Arthur Burns? Uh, Volcker, Paul Volcker. Yeah, Paul Volcker. He's the guy who invented currency trading back in the early 70s. Um, and that is under the full control of the Fed New York and the US Treasury. Right. Any currency, just look what's happening to the Philippine currency after. Uh, Duarte told Obama, he, you know, smelled like a dog or whatever he said to him. <laughs> they're getting destroyed. Their currency is getting destroyed, and, and they're right behind Venezuela. Well, the the whole thing with the, with the see the Philippines is smart versus Venezuela. Philippines understands that they can they they can stick their middle finger up at the U.S. and the way you get out of it is you just integrate with China, the the New Silk Road, the Eurasian sure. Trade Zone, and yep. you get out, you get out of the SWIFT and you get into SIPs and you're good. What what, what Venezuela what kills me is dude. That guy Hugo Chavez, which I'm no big fan of whatsoever, but he knew up. he knew what was going on. Remember him holding up bars of gold at the U.S. Yes, exactly. So he knew exactly he, what was happening. Exactly. So he repatriated all of Venezuela's gold from the BOE, and Maduro, Nicolas Maduro, the sweetness, has uh, you know basically given back all the gold to the BOE via a loan from Goldman Sachs. It's unbelievable, unreal, man. So just just the level of stupidity. I mean, that's what happens when you have a a, a bus uh you know a bus driver running a country, bro. And no knock on bus drivers. It's just that Maduro is an idiot. Yeah, but they 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 shouldn't have. They they told the powers that be to fuck off before they were ready to take care of themselves. They should have waited yeah. in, until these these bad guys. Killed themselves off, which they kind of were doing. Very stupid. See that? See that? That that's why in Ecuador, Korea is smart. Korea is smart in that regard. He is just staying real quiet. He's just giving his concessions. Okay, you could have a little bit of this oil, no problem. You know, uh, yeah, I know you guys tried to do an assassination attempt, a coup on me. Okay, fine. But he's real quiet. But he's staying in power because uh, he knows what's coming around the corner. I mean, this guy is in, I, I, he's got an economics degree from I think uh, Illinois or Indiana University. Mm-hmm. You know, so he's not he's, he's no dummy. Uh, well, if, if you know, it's not really an economics degree. You just got to know they're rigging the markets. Right, one thousand percent. And that's that's the key to any anything any market. You know, the U.S. dollar, the bonds, gold, silver, platinum, coal. Oil and gas, it's rigged 100% with computers and derivatives. 100%. There is no such thing as a free market. Correct. And um, unfortunately for Maduro, the sweetness, and uh, his uh, band of merry men who are a bunch of revolutionaries, they just couldn't uh, They couldn't wait. They just wanted to show the world that we have a revolution, and uh, look what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I, you know, there's <laughs> – when we end this game, when the computers are shut off, you're going to see the United States kind of on an even playing field as everybody else. Now yep. we being the brilliant people that we are and had a plan since the early 1900s, 
decided to keep most of our resources in the ground. And we would hide anytime we found oil, large yep. oil reserve or gold, we'd put it in a national park or a wildlife reserve or, or military and, base. And that's what right. we've been doing. Yes. And then we say things like the West Bumble Hoo Ha Dung Beetle is, uh, <laughs> is going to go extinct. So we must protect this whole entire 3,000 acres. Just exactly. For exactly. And, and that's exactly what we've done. Uh, whether or not, you know, you think it's moral and right. Well, morality went out the window long ago. I think it was to save our country in the beginning. Um, but, you know, the handing over the ability to print money from the Congress to the Federal Reserve in, in 1913 was, it, Wilson thought it was necessary because we had found all that gold in the Grand Canyon and it would have destroyed the monetary system and destroyed society because it would have devalued the value of gold and gold was money back then. So he, he gave it to the bankers and said, you guys, you know, we're going to hide this gold in the Grand Canyon. We're going to guard it with Marines. There's a military base in there. I know a guy who's been there. Uh, and then, you know, we're going to print pieces of paper. At first they just did uh, gold bonds and gold certificates and then they moved on to pieces of uh, you know paper from trees, and now they're uh, into electronic blips, and they're going to run the system as long and as hard as they can until it is done, and that's kind of where we're getting. Um, but the, you know the problem that that these people did not take into account was that all the bad things that happen, and you put bad guys in charge, you put the banks in charge of money and controlling the money system. They're going to abuse it, and ultimately, they're going to take you out of power. And that's what was done at, you know, at a minimum when they took out Kennedy. Um, so this right. thing with Trump is all about taking that power back—the power of, of money and the power back to the people. Um, so hopefully, Trump will get in, and and we will have a new president on January twentieth. Right. Exactly. It, so many things at play. It's so many different levels. Um, unbelievable. And that brings us to the end of Hump Day. <laughs> <laughs> always fun, V. Always fun. Dude, it's always a blast. Uh, I definitely have to go out and get that cover today. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's um, not really I'm, easy to find because not many people carry the Economist magazine anymore. Well, you're yeah, in New uh, York. If you're in New York, you should be able to find it. Yeah, yeah. I'll have no problem finding it whatsoever. I mean, they have it at my local Barnes & Nobles, thank God. I'm um, definitely going to check it out. I'm going to order your report, sir. Yeah, guys, order Bix's report. Uh, in subscribe to his email, subscribe to his uh, his newsletters. It's great pieces of information. There's always intel there to glean. And this is uh, you know, if you want to stay ahead of the ahead of the the curve, I think the smartest people that are who are the best investors, who are the most savviest businessmen, who are some of the most successful people out there, are individuals that are always gleaning and garnering all types of intel. And and they take it, they they look at it, they digest it, they put it to the test. If if it doesn't make sense at the beginning, they just file it away for later. That's how you have to be. You have to be information active rather than information passive. And uh, with that being said, guys, we're again at the end of Hump Day. So uh, check out Bix. He is the the pathfinder to the road to Ruda, the Baron of Bitcoin, the Sultan of Silver, the Gandalf of Gold. The men hate him, and the women want to be with him. And I am the lowly Simeon, the one and only gorilla, uh, a.k.a. I am the bubbles to his Michael Jackson. And we are over and out. <laughs>